We are back on our installation of a new downstairs toilet. As you can see, we are nominally further forward, so let me explain all of this and what we're gonna be doing next. So I'm starting at the top and working downwards since if I've made any mistakes with my marking, it's much easier to tweak things at floor level than at ceiling level. I started off by squaring off from my initial line to the side wall and now I'm marking my position of the studs that were found last time on the top plate of the stud wall. I can then drill some clearance holes and mark up through those holes onto the ceiling. I'm just using a couple of temporary fixings while I mark things up. These are only short and don't go all the way through the ceiling. I'm then using a drill just to mark the screw positions. This can be a little bit tricky if you're working by yourself with a long top plate, so you might want to rig up some temporary supports to keep things steady. I'm then using a nice blunt 8mm masonry bit to drill all the way through the ceiling and make sure I'm hitting a joist. Obviously don't drill through the joist, but you should get a good idea from this if you're on target. As you can see I missed the joist on this one, which is fine, you just need to be really careful not to hit anything above the ceiling. Another quick hole slightly to the left and we're back on target. I can't emphasise enough how important this stage is. If you go hell for leather into your ceiling with giant sharp screws and you miss the joist, there's a reasonable chance you'll hit a pipe or cable. Now it's simply a case of screwing the top plate to the joists. I'll show you the fixings I'm using later on. I'm using concrete screws to attach the side studs to the brick wall. These are very strong but a little bit temperamental in terms of the hole getting clogged while screwing the fixings in. So be prepared to drill the hole a bit deeper than needed. You'll feel if it's getting stuck and if that happens don't persevere since you'll never get it back out again. Remove the screw and just re-drill it. The major benefit of these fixings is that once you've drilled some clearance holes through the stud, you can go straight through that into your brick wall and there's no need to add plugs or anything like that. Also in my experience they're much stronger than hammer fixings. I like to start at the top and work down since then the stud is hanging more or less vertical. I can then double check for plumb, add the bottom fixing and then it's just a case of filling in the rest. If you're unlucky and hit a mortar line, then just re-drill slightly higher or lower. You'll not get a good fixing in mortar, you need to be going into either brick or concrete or concrete blocks or something like that. And all of that takes us up to this stage here, where basically we've got the top framework in, we've got the side bits in, and the last bit is just to attach this bottom section here. This is just sitting on the floor, it's not attached to anything at the minute, but I wanted to show you exactly how I go about making sure that this is perfectly plumb with the top plate of the stud wall, because obviously we don't want wonky walls. 
So I've got the laser set up and what you can see, can you see how there's two laser beams? And uh, if you've never used a laser before, you're probably thinking that's a bit odd. Why is there two laser beams? And the reason is, is because the beam is literally just kissing the side of this stud that is firmly affixed into this brick wall. And it's so much on the edge. I mean, up here, you can kind of see the laser beam coming down the edge of the bit of wood but it's splitting the beam in half basically. So if we look at it dead on, hopefully you can see that um, it is just a single beam, but it's just because uh, it's so close to the edge of that stud, it makes it split the beam in half. So we've got the split beam there. That means that we're perfectly on that edge. Likewise at the top, we've split the beam as well. So that means that we're perfectly in line at the top, perfectly in line down the side. But yeah, so laser there and hopefully you can just see that the laser is kissing the edge of the bottom plate of the stud wall on that direction. So we know that we're all in line that way. And I've also done exactly the same on the bottom plate going in that direction as well. I've already squared it off at the top. So if everything's plumb, then it should be square at the bottom as well. But just to be sure, hopefully it can make that out, but yeah, that's pretty damn square. I'm gonna try and hit the joists on this side. The joists go this away. We've got one there, one there, one over there. So nice big screws through into the joists. Fixings I'm using so far for the studs that are going into the brick wall, I am using these. That's seven and a half mil by 120 mil concrete screws. That's these fellas here, Torx head on them. Mega, mega strong, and you don't need to bother with wall plugs either. My one little tip when you're using these, so these need a, a decent size, probably at least uh, seven or eight mil clearance hole through the wood. I'm not sure what they suggest. Do they suggest? No, they don't tell you, but it's about seven or eight mil, I can't remember. And then once you get into the wall in the actual brick, it's a six mil hole that they recommend. So I'm using the SDS drill into the brick wall to give us that six mil hole, but make sure you go in plenty deep. You'll know when you come to put these in and if they get stuck, it's probably that you've not made the hole deep enough. So sometimes you have to kind of just keep on going in and out with the drill until you get it about right. But yeah, these give an incredibly strong fixing into brickwork. And then wood screws that I'm using for the base plate and the top plate. I'm just using these fellas here. These are six by a hundred mil self-drilling wood screws. That gives plenty to get through the actual stud and into the uh, joist. They're probably a little bit long to be honest, but uh, I know there's nothing that I'm gonna risk hitting underneath this floor. So, that's not so much of a problem, but obviously one of the main reasons that I had to make sure that I was definitely going into a joist in the ceiling is because if I wasn't, that would easily come through the ceiling and go straight into a pipe or cable or whatever. So yeah, uh, take your own risks with that sort of stuff. And by the way, these are just the screws that I'm using. You use whatever screws you want to use for the project that you're doing. It's gonna vary obviously, depending on the type of wall that you're going into, uh, the timber sizes and what's underneath your floor and stuff like that. Anyway, fun part, and we can now actually start putting the studs up. So I've cut a couple of these to the correct size. Hopefully, he says. So that's exactly right for there. So once I've got the size absolutely perfect, then I'm using 
that kind of as a template to cut the rest because I need all of these to be pretty much the same size. So I've clamped a bunch of these together. My top one is the template one, so I know that top one's exactly the right size. And all of these ends are perfectly flush with each other. And then I'm just using the chop saw for this. Obviously, make sure you've got all your safety gear on, but you can just use a normal saw for this. You don't have to use a chop saw, but it's more accurate with a chop saw and um, much, much quicker. So it's kind of key at this stage that you're using decent quality timber. Luckily, all of this wood's pretty good, but there's the odd one that's got like a little split in it and stuff like that. So really for these timbers that are forming the edges, you want to make sure these are pretty decent quality. So as straight as a die, you want them to be as straight as possible. If you have got any bananas in the bunch, then use those more for your kind of internal studs because they don't really matter that much. But for your corners, you want your corners to be nice and straight. That's a really nice piece of wood that. So that's gonna form this corner piece here. So I've already bought the door lining. It's a good idea to, to buy it before you start doing the actual stud work because now we need to get this opening exactly the right size. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure from the outside of the two outer legs of the door lining and that is 745. So I'm gonna make it 755. That basically gives us five mil either side if I need to square things up a bit. So all I'm doing is measuring 755 across there. That gives our mark there. Square that off. Again, we want a nice straight piece of wood for this because it's going to be the uh, door opening. That one's lovely. Actually, that's got a bit of a, it's got a bit of a split there. So I'm going to put the split on the inside. It's only a tiny, it's like a, it's not really a split, it's just a, a little wafer of wood trying to come off.
In case you're wondering, 3.1 by 90 ring shanks that I'm using for this. Obviously, you don't have to use a nail gun. I happen to have a nail gun. You can screw it together. Lord forbid you can hand nail it together. But obviously, it's infinitely quicker with one of these. But anyway, pretty happy with this. That's it. Stud work all done. Absolutely solid, by the way. That ain't going anywhere. And um, it's all ready to go for the plasterboard, really. We've put a noggin, uh, sorry, where it's like a little kind of header mini stud at the top there, simply because that's where the join between two boards is gonna be. And because we've got the slightly awkward 2.6 meter ceilings to deal with, it means that it's gonna be a sheet of plasterboard and a bit. So I'm actually gonna start at the top because I don't wanna join on the plasterboard somewhere where it's gonna be like mega visible. So we'll start at the top and then we'll put the little strip. It's only gonna be like that big. The skirting board will cover most of it and the bits that the skirting board doesn't cover will probably be covered by units and shelves and things. So I'd rather do the join at the bottom on the off chance that you get some cracking on the join. It shouldn't do. Anyway, I'm blethering. This'll be the um, join in that direction. So in other words, it's 1200 from the wall to the middle of this little mini stud here. We'll do an entire sheet and then I'll cut this out. You kind of want to avoid doing a join just above the door header on the left and right because they invariably crack. Sometimes it's unavoidable, but here it's easy to avoid that, so might as well. And then over on that side, we can get an entire board on that side, I think. Where's my tape measure? Can you even see me? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's only 90, 985. So full board on that side, little join at the bottom, full board, and then just a little section down here, cross to there. Ah, that was quite a big spell. What a silly thing to do. Anyway, I'm probably gonna be bleeding quite a lot soon. So noggins are all in, and yeah, as I say, it ain't going anywhere. I'm hoping, Next time we'll get onto the actual knock through. I was hoping to get that started today, but I haven't had time. It just slows things down a lot when you're filming, but uh, yeah, at least that's the stud work done. We've still got the little studs to put at the back here for the kind of false wall at the back of this, but I need my table saw to rip those bits down. And at the minute, I can't get moved in the garage. So I'm gonna have to do that a little bit later down the line. But that's fine, I can smash through the wall in the meantime. Folks, as per usual, I hope you've enjoyed this. Any questions, pop them down in the comments below. Loads more to come on this. We'll talk about the building reg side of things, ventilation, all the plumbing stuff, We've got the plasterboarding to do. Uh, there's loads still to do. As I say, I want this to be one of those projects where I can really go into the nitty gritty detail of everything because sometimes you have to kind of rush through stuff and you end up like missing out on key important bits. This one, I don't want to do that. Um, I want to go into it in quite a lot of detail. It'll mean it's a bit niche and a lot of you will probably find it a little bit boring, but uh, yeah, a lot of you hopefully will be able to learn something from it as well. And maybe I will too. Folks, as per usual, be nice to one another, look after each other, and we shall see you next time. Taddy bye.